I am Kate Calvin, NASA's Chief Scientist and Senior Climate Advisor, and I'm sitting down with Bill Anders, who took the famous Earthrise photo. Oh my God, look at that picture over there. There's the Earth coming up. Wow, isn't that crazy? Look at the sky. So most of us only get to see what's right in front of us, the sidewalk, the building, the trees. But when you were in space, you had this opportunity to see the planet as a whole, this beautiful blue planet. What was that like? Well, before we got to the moon, I was able to look back at the Earth, and it was about the size of my fist at arm's length. And you really couldn't see any details. It was kind of, a, you couldn't see the continents even, you know, and even the people from orbit, you know, don't see many man-made features, if any, uh, from space. But I uh, thought that it uh, it was really kind of a, it was at Christmas time, and it was a, like a, fragile Christmas tree ornament. And I thought to myself, you know, it's too bad we don't treat it more like a Christmas tree ornament. And then when I was lucky enough to take the iconic Earthrise picture, which basically kicked off the Earth Day and that kind of thing, it, it, it's really too bad, you know, we're shooting missiles and rockets and whatnot at each other on this tiny little place we call home, it's the only home in the universe for us humans. And, uh, you know, it's too bad we don't treat it a little better. We're approaching the 53rd Earth Day. And as you said, Earthrise has had a tremendous impact on people and the environmental movement. What do you think the biggest impacts were both then and now of the Earthrise photo? Well, it, it people realize that the planet was uh, fragile, uh, delicate. Clearly, mankind has not been kind to the planet. But could you tell the story of taking Earthrise? We had, uh, I think they gave me a little bit of photography training. I had a camera I took home, a Hasselblad, took a few pictures, but, you know, no, didn't even have a light meter on our flight. And so we were in lunar orbit, uh, upside down and going backwards, so uh, for the first several uh, revolutions, and we didn't see the Earth. And uh, didn't really think about that. And then we righted ourselves, you know, heads up, and twisted the spacecraft so it was going forward. And while Frank Borman was in the process of doing that, suddenly I saw out of the corner of my eye this color. It was shocking. Oh my God, look at that picture over there. There's the Earth coming up. Wow, that's pretty. You got a color film, Jim? Hand me a roll of color quick. Oh, man, that's color. Where is it? Quick. So I managed to get level to get me a color magazine, put the long lens on, on and started snapping away. You got it? Yep. It takes several. It takes several. Here, give it to me. Wait a minute, let me just get the right setting here. Calm down, level. Oh, I got it right here. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Now, there's a very explosion I did. I took two up there. You sure you got it now? Yeah, we'll get, well, it'll come up again, I think. Without a light meter, I really didn't know what to set it. So I just uh, took the uh, F-stop and just took a shot, moved it, took a shot, moved it, and, and, uh, and then really didn't think that much about it. I think had I not taken the Earthrise picture, you know, uh, Bill who? <laughs> I have it hanging on the wall of my office. And Is that it's right? A, it's a reminder every day of why we do this, for yeah. science, for inspiration, for innovation, yeah. for home. Yeah. So it, it makes people think, you know, yeah. about this fragile little ball we live on. Yeah. Beautiful, fragile. I haven't made them think enough, but uh, we do think. Earth is one of our most important missions at NASA, and we're continuing to use that vantage point of space, the, the image that you saw, we continue to look at Earth and see how it's changing. What words of wisdom would you give future scientists, astronauts, or the next generation? Certainly a uh, viewing of space, from of Earth from space, like Landsat, which I fought for, and from the space station, we're looking down at the Earth. I think Landsat's how most people see Earth. We get to see a lot of the 50 years worth of Landsat imagery. And uh, Landsat has been, a, to my knowledge, been quite a uh, 
helpful program. Yeah, it's been tremendous both in showing the planet how it changes, but also yeah. providing information to landowners everywhere. Right. So you're known for one of the most poetic quotes about going to the moon and discovering Earth. Can you tell us about that? It's hard for me to imagine I actually said it because it's so poetic. <laughs> but when they ask people, you know, uh, you know, what impressed you? I said, well, you know, we, we went to the moon to explore the moon and what we discovered was the Earth. So uh, one, I was lucky to take Earthrise with color film, with a long lens and make that statement. And that's about my real environmental claim to fame. It's a pretty big claim to fame. Yeah. But I do think often we have to leave home to appreciate it. Yeah. And you had that opportunity. And I think uh, generations are grateful for what yeah, you've done. Well, but it, seeing the Earth from space, and I really, uh, wish I had could get take a flight in the space station because we were just in Earth orbit one and a half okay. revolutions. So but it is beautiful from space.